of the night, 3 a.m. 6.20. <laughs> and me and Michael are dressed like Eskimos because we're heading back to Utah in the middle of the night. Honestly, the, the reason why we're heading back right now is because we need to get our old house completely emptied. We didn't empty it all the way when we left. And we still need to get it completely empty so that we can sell it. But um, we were gonna leave in a couple of weeks to go do that, but we feel like we need to do it sooner and we feel like we're being blessed with good weather right now. It's like it was good weather all the way up until we left Utah and then while we've been here in Missouri, it's been good weather almost the entire time. There was one windstorm that was a little bit iffy and other than that, it was like really good. It's been very good and we just look at that like, yep, we gotta go, we gotta get this taken care of before ice storms hit and before it gets too bad and the, we and the weather is like shutting things down. So we are headed back. It's just me and Michael. All of the kids are staying with grandma and grandpa and I hope that they have an amazing time. I also hope the internet gets hooked up soon so that they that can watch so nice. whatever they want to watch because they are going to be, I'm worried they're going to be bored. <laughs> <laughs> but, so my parents, I'm, that's what I was worried it's about. A video game. I wasn't, I wasn't even talking about the kids. The kids will be fine. I'm worried mom and dad are gonna be bored. <laughs> so, anyways, we're on the road, and it is late, and we're gonna be driving through the night because it works out in that in the way that weather-wise, we will be able to be in the right places at the right time so that we're avoiding any storms if we go right now. So, hopefully we don't get trapped in Utah. That is the one thing I'm a little bit scared about. Worst case, we just head south, go down to St. George, head across down, you know, Texas, Louisiana, or whatever, and then pop up north from there. That'll be a much longer trip than we were expecting, but, would, but we could just least, plow through. Yeah. Yeah, or if we had to get chains on the tires because of snow or something, I think we'll be alright. On the road again! Alright. <laughs> You'd think this is for me, but actually it's <laughs> Michael's! <laughs> we, <laughs> we just stopped go so Beck could go to the bathroom and I saw the hot chocolate and I was like, it's cold. I would love some hot You've been chocolate. driving in the cold on purpose. Keeps me awake. So I don't go like... so mm. cold. I was so cold. Even with all those blankets back there, I was still like... Oh. I had to put something over my head. My ears. It was oh. so cold. And then I saw a donut. And I was like, oh. Chocolate cake donut with hot chocolate is the perfect little combo. Wow. <laughs> and I feel for the first time in two years like I don't need to rely on the sugar right now and I'm so happy like doing it I remember thinking I was hopefully listening to I was listening to something uh, oh it was Jennifer Finlayson Pipe just barely the lady who was talking was like um, when you have a lower level of thinking or something mm -hmm. Lower desire? Lower desire, whatever. Low, yeah, low level, whatever. Um, she was saying that it was really hard for people, they were like white knuckling it to stay away from the stuff they were trying to stay away from. That's how I felt for the last two years. And um, I just don't feel like that right now. And But I feel like, like I don't need to eat junk for the first time in two mm. years, I think because I'm getting other things Anyways, I just felt like, okay, I I feel really, really happy right now. Yes, I'm gonna get hungry, but I don't feel like, like I bought a chocolate orange for myself for Christmas. There wasn't even one time that I thought about opening it. And that's like really good for me. That's Did you the open first, it? no. You still haven't eaten it yet? No. Are you going to, or are you saving it for You know, I decided to just, <laughs> well, no, I decided to tell myself I get to. And by telling myself I get to, I don't need to. <laughs> you know, it's like, it happens to me too. When I have candy in the cupboard or when I have sugary stuff, yeah, it's like, oh, it's there. I don't need it. Yeah. And, but by having it there, it makes it less desirable. Yeah. But when I don't have any candy, then I'm like, 
I need to go get some candy. Yeah. But by having it, I'm like, I'm good. Except for you just got a donut and chocolate, but that's you know, okay. <laughs> I wasn't. Even, that's true. It wasn't like it didn't there even come out of times. temptation either. It was like a, a, I think a I perfectly like that. content. But then I was like, that looks really good. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna get it. Yeah. But that's not something I do like. No, ever. you don't. And you know, it, it's like this is really fun. Last this time I bought hot chocolate trip. from a gas station was probably like three or four years ago. Nope. Last year, Christmas. Did we do it last yeah, year? Yeah, we went on Polar Express. Well, Was we didn't go on the Polar year? Express, but we did go through Feels like, like a still. festival of lights. A year ago, that's not. Also, I feel like we've had three different Christmases because we had one in Utah, and then we, like, well, not we had one, but like we started listening to Christmas music, and we went to a park where we saw Santa Claus, and then we Santa. went to. I was I, I when I said Santa in my head, it was totally elf voice that said it. <laughs> Santa! Three different Christmases, and also the weirdest Christmas of all time, just because we've been in a bunch of different places. And I have to say, Christmas is better when you have a home base. That's how I feel. Of course. It's like it's like you can't really enjoy it in the fullest if you don't have a home. Yeah. So I feel so happy that we were able to get a home. In fact, when we left Utah, I felt so panicked because I realized my list of things that needed to get done in order before Christmas, and I felt like it just happened had to happen before Christmas, was pack up all my stuff, move out a whole bunch of states away, um, stay with family until we found a house which I wasn't even sure if I was going to be. That might not have happened. And it might not have happened. It's a miracle there were that so it did happen. many things that could have not happened. Yep. And then it was like search for houses like crazy, find a house, get into it before Christmas. Hopefully you have, I've bought some Christmas presents by then and then wrap them all and get them under the tree and have a good Christmas. And actually I just want to say Michael is I think one of his gifts in this life is the ability to absorb information. Like, he could, he, okay, imagine a fire hose going full blast with his mouth open to it. He can absorb all that information, no problem. I can't do it. It's like, sometimes my brain, it will just come and then it will go right over my head. Like, it will just, maybe he's had more practice. I don't know, but funny because I think everybody in my family is kind of like that and everybody in his family is kind of like that like like him but anyways it's really crazy to see also he's been listening to The Art of Loving by Jennifer Finlayson Fife and it's very very good um I think I would recommend it I've been actually recommending it to a lot of people anybody that are struggling within relationships I would say need to read it or listen to it I mean um, because it's it's just so good teaching you a lot of things that even Michael has said it's like things that thoughts that you've had but that you couldn't put into words and that once it's put into words it solidifies like yes this is good and then you were listening to what Saints the podcast or something Saints and Saints the podcast so the Saints is the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Which is really crazy history. Yeah, it's cool. Like, different culture, different time, but also, like, uh, there's a lot of things in the history of the LDS Church that are like, what? And then there's a podcast that I've never... So I've actually listened to the first Saints book. There's two now. I've listened to the first one twice. They have it for free. Um, and now I'm listening for the first time now to the podcast that goes along with it chapter by chapter as they talk about the actual historians that compiled the stories to create the book Saints talk about some, a little bit of the behind the scenes, yeah, right? Of, of, Which adds to it a lot. Yeah. I was listening, I will, my unconscious mind was listening a little bit <laughs> and I was thinking, hmm, interesting, that is a very good story I will not remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we just hit I-80, so we are officially on the main drag. This will take us all the way through Nebraska and Wyoming and into Utah uh, as we're heading home. So we're going to be on this road for 846 miles. Woo! <laughs> What's going on? Oh 
Oh, the, oh, there's an overturned car. They're like, they're using the, they're sawing it open. Look, there's, there's so many police. Oh. Those are police, those are police, those are police. That's so sad. Yeah, we were driving and it just looked like, I mean, we, we really slowed down because the road turned and right where they were sitting looked like it was the end, the end of a straight road, but really it turned right before and they were on the other side. But we thought we were going into a roadblock, but they were actually cutting the car open and it was flipped upside down. That's so sad. You ready to sleep for the night? Yeah. It's 2 a.m. You can see the rest stop over there. Some semi trucks around here. But um, we had to stop. I mean, I could have probably kept going pretty easy, but. I know it was cold. It's 2 a.m. and uh, we found out that, well, it started getting kind of windy, and so we started looking at the weather for the rest of the trip. And it's like, with each town further down the road, it's like the wind is getting worse and worse and worse. There's a place that's in a couple, like in an hour from here, that's like really bad wind. So we're Until like. like 5 a.m. Until 5 a.m., yeah. yeah so, so a few hours from now. So we're like, yeah, you know what? Let's stop at a rest stop. Let's sleep until morning. And uh, the wind should subside and we can continue our traveling. We agreed that we're not going to try to push we gotta be faster than we should. And so if it means we need to sleep for a couple hours and wait for a couple hours here and there, we'll make it. If we, I mean, as it is right now, it says we're going to be getting to our old house by like noon and frankly I have no intention of arriving there before even probably dark on Monday so if it says we're gonna be there at noon and I'm like okay if we don't get there until 7 or 8 p.m. that's okay too so if it means we have to rest here and there to make it there safely that's okay and I'm just putting like blanket after blanket after blanket because I'm very cold. <laughs> but I brought lots and lots just in case. Anyway, I think we're signing off for the night. Good night, you guys. Thanks for joining us and hopefully we arrive safe. Okay, today I'm going to read some comments from We're Moving Across the Country. These videos are so fun. This is from Krista Vlogs. Hopefully we can still get together one day in the future because I freaking miss you all, but this change will be good for you guys. It's been so good. <laughs> Jesse Rose 18 says, you're amazing. I want to get over my fear of driving. It's been hard. You know what? The person you should talk to is Michael. Hey, Michael! What? Come here. Oh, if... you're not supposed to have this here if it's not beach theory. Oh, it's not beach theory. Oh, by the way, we, we rearranged the office. This is now, it's, it, I'm literally sitting only a few feet away from what um, used to be where I was filming, but now it's our office instead of our bedroom because we're rearranging for the baby and you guys will see a video of that. I'm not sure how soon because we're still behind, but we will be catching up soon. All right, I have a question for you. Okay. Jesse Rose 18 says, you're amazing. Just like in general to me, I think. <laughs> but it's she true. says, <laughs> She says, I want to get over my fear of driving. It's been hard. What would you have to say? And let me just preface this with, Michael has helped Jessica, Amanda, Shinaway. Mm -hmm. Did you help Jared or no? Mm -mm. Jessica, Amanda, and Shinaway, three of my siblings get their driver's licenses. So. I'm basically the driver's ed teacher. He's like basically a driver's ed teacher. What would you say to somebody who is struggling with that? I love this. Michael loves this. Look at this. I think it's so cool. One of my favorite decorations. <laughs> Let's just go right there. Okay. Um, spot. My advice is, is the way that I approach driving, which is really take it slow. Take it super slow. Like, if you're uncomfortable or scared, take it ridiculously slow. Literally, have some. someone's got to help you drive. You have to have a driver's permit learner's permit first so someone True. has to go with you and whoever that person is needs to be very patient and then i would say go out in the middle of nowhere find some boonies a huge dirt road lot, something and then just go really slow for a really long time until you're like i'm bored then you're ready for the next level <laughs> up. 
Like, if you drive so long that you're bored, you're ready for the next step. But that's how I would do it. And then just slowly, slowly step up, step up, step up. And uh, whoever's helping you needs to pay attention because eventually they're going to watch you and be like, okay, you're ready for more. Mm -hmm. Like, it's time to push you a little bit outside your comfort zone and keep taking those incremental steps outside your comfort zone slowly but surely till you're driving on freeways. And it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You are not less than if it took you longer to get your driver's license. That's not a thing. It just is different for everybody. And we always, as a society, like to compare each other and say that we are better because of this or that. But the reality is everybody's different. And we take different time, like amounts of time, getting to the places we're going. And, I, Michael, did you know that I am literally counting on you helping teach these kids how to drive because <laughs> he says of course because I'm You're not gonna do it. really anxious about it <laughs> Michael's just hanging up stuff on the wall right now Ta -da! that's cute Thank good you. did you see the just another day in paradise yep it's on the camera too yeah. all right so Jesse Rose, I hope that helps. You might have a fear of driving, but just take it so slow. Maybe you'll be just fine. I think you will. Jay Britton says, where are you moving to? I have done several cross country moves in my life, so I understand the emotions and the work involved. Wishing you a safe and wonderful adventure. Yes, we have moved to Missouri and this was in December. Right now we are in August. Oh, so it hasn't been quite a full year yet, um, but we have been here for a long time. And it has been amazing. We love Missouri. And then there's so many mosquitoes and bugs. Oh, uh, that's one thing I don't like as much, but it'll be okay. <laughs> uh, Pippi Long says, I think it is great that you are able to homeschool your children. Are they, are the subjects more challenging as they get older? I would say yes, but also I feel like our kids are learning to self teach, self learn, self learn. Be self-motivated to learn a lot more like that's been Michael's main goal with teaching them and just so you know I'm not the main homeschool teacher Michael is he was the one that was homeschooled and he loves homeschooling and he um, has been a really good one for our kids but they they as they have been getting older the main thing that Michael is trying to teach them is how to teach themselves because ultimately that's the only real skill that they need in um, becoming a self-taught learner, entrepreneur, whatever they're going to be in their life, they're going to need to know how to learn. And that's something that I didn't really get going to public school. Everybody forced everything down my throat that I didn't really want to learn and it never made me actually want to be passionate about anything except for once I became an adult and met Michael. And he kind of helped me to learn how to become passionate about things that I care about. And then learning just becomes easy because it's not something that you are forced to do. It's something that you want to do. Jody Rodriguez says, wait, when did you live in Oregon and what city? We lived in Cottage Grove. So that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and we were only there for two months because it was really, really hard, our living situation. But it was a really cool little artistic town that was just really unique, eclectic. That's a good word for it. So I hope you guys enjoy that video and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.